G'day, how you going? Hey Annapolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my channel here. If it's your first time here, give us a thumbs up, share, like and subscribe and stick around because you will enjoy my channel. Now I'll just get some sizes on there before we get going because I always like to get them there because there's a lot of people out there that message me and go, what size was the canvas? Well, there you go. And also the colours are going up the screen as well. All right, so you can grab those colours or something similar. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do like, I, I really like waters and things like that and trees and reflections. This one's going to be a watery tree reflection-y thing. It's going to make someone go, oh, I like that. It's going to have an effect on people, this one. Uh, I'm going to start from scratch. I was going to start with the canvas already coloured, but you can see this little dot here. Yeah, I've been experimenting. So I'm going to colour the whole canvas in like that so we're layering it up and it's something you can do or you can do it your own way so long as you get the finished picture at the end. That's what our task is, okay? So get on over here, grab yourself a coffee, grab yourself some time and enthusiasm and we'll get right into it. Now you can see I've got a horizon line here and I'm going to have a bit of a bank for all the trees and it's going to be all trees but let's not bore it too much let's have a bit of the sky in the background going hey here you go and don't forget about me that's going to be up there as well uh, when you do your bank your land on top of the water i've got it in a straight line to mark the area but i want you to learn not to put a row of trees all the way on that area there Bring them forward and back from each other as well to give the painting some charisma. So down on my palette, I've just got some Australian sienna. Grab yourself some yellow oxide or something of that nature. Let's hope that's a... enough. I've got me putter on a brush. I'm just going to dampen it and um, pull the water off it. That's that way it's, it's wet. It's not dry and too wanting. I have given the canvas a bit of a spray all over. So this will go on it. Now I'm just going to get arty. I don't want to try and get a nice pattern. This can have texture, brush strokes, different values, but you can see the water that I've sprayed on the canvas. It's allowed this to merge across it a lot easier if it was dry it'll be very draggy i'll do a bit more because i need it to there we go i need it to get over it so this is just an australian sienna you can use a yellow ochre if you have it a yellow oxide i'll just stroke that a bit get it nice and level now that way i know it's all in the tooth of my canvas I have given this a dry and I want to just put in the g'day how you going I'm in the background sort of sky in there so I've got some craft white just to prime up for me sky I'm just gonna dance it on like this so I want probably a a peaky boo section roughly there mainly at the top and then coming down I'll just pick up some more of this uh, Come straight off the painting there. See how it's all just brushed? I'm not trying to do a neat factory job. I'll put a little bit in the corner there. Because I want the blue, if I can, maybe just coming a bit beyond this. And probably some light bits. Get some more paint on the brush. This is a bit different for me, but. Um, you need a bit of variety, don't we? Sometimes it's hard to get out of our ways of painting. We just want to stick to the one way, but I need to change things up for you viewers out there. So that's pretty much it. Now I've just got a softer flat brush and I want to just kind of gimulate this paint onto that white and a little bit beyond it if I can. I'll see how it works beyond it. So and it, I don't mind if it picks up some of the orange because it's going to create warmth in the sky. So see now I'm creating just this, twisting it on, something different to do a sky. Pull it back on the brush and I'm creating values of blue and I want it to fade into that orange. 
so we've got some kind of sky there come back here where you were now what I'm going to do I'll just wipe the buggery out of that this is a soft brush and I want to get that a bit more there we go so we've kind of got this is you're barely going to see this but it's there I'll just get that scrumbled down into that orange now there I'll go to the edge of the white and then I'll pull it down into the orangey Australian sienna you'll see watch the video a few times and get an idea of just what's in my mind and what I'm trying to achieve here so when you start painting you know what to do as well it's all in your mind there get that past there just like so now we can dry this and double layer that give it another coat if you feel okay I've got some viridian green and black I want to mix together because I want to get a really dark black just for the black areas where we're going to build up our highlights on so it's pretty much black but it's got that green hue in there it's got that green going on so use whatever greens you've got a darkest green and just blackulate it so it's it's not black but it's not green it's just in the middle there and pretty much that line that we had for our bank from there we want to pretty much or oh, come a bit above that and all above there we want well let's just go from our horizon on we can just paint this in dark okay that's very dark that's what you want all right and then we're going to come up with this and there's our sky so just start painting from the bottom up up just till you get to your sky there because this will all come into sense later on more here this is going to be right in the background adding depth within this swampy scene here and I, I feel whether they belong there or not I don't know but I want to do them I want to put some more lilies there okay so let me finish this all the way along okay I've got all that done now where it's hitting the blue I'm just bringing it lightly to the blue like that and then let it lightly jostle into the blue okay and we're going to bring our trees and sink that blue back a lot more better than this more detailed but at the moment I'm just getting this dark in there so I don't want a nice solid line there I want it really naturefied into that blue sky just like that if you can arts about being arty getting artsy fartsy with it all it's a lot of fun put your hand back on your brush stand back and pretend you're a real Picasso there and get involved in your work that's what it's all about become at one with it and you're, you're enjoying yourself now I just want some bits playing over that sky you'll see what I mean uh, once you've watched the whole video and you see the end picture how it's just playing out but if this looks black to you on the screen so be it but it's not black you can see in real life the green the depth I'm just featuring that into that blue there just like that and then I can come back here okay I've dried all that I would I do want to make sure I know roughly where my horizon is I, I was thinking to do it later but I'm just going to get all this in as well so pretty much paint the whole canvas so because because the sky isn't visible in this painting there's not going to be a lot of light color in the water reflections all right it's going to be mainly those darks and greens so I thought I might as well map in our darker area in the water reflection area okay down here I've got forest green and some sap green I want to start with the darkest forest green I'm just using a large filbert and what my objective is here on the canvas 
is we've got our darks here. See, this is going to marry with that dark quite well. I just want to start putting the darker greens on now on top of that. So I'll pretty much, I don't want that black in the sky. I want some of this color vegging over it now. So I'm, I'm going to make this color pretty much go where I want. It's dark enough to sit on the sky without looking too see-throughy and weak. So this is what's dribbling over the sky now. I'm going to the sky bits first, just so you get an idea and a gist of what's peeking through. There we go. And we want to leave a fair amount of darks within this. Let me just come over here, dribble over that black and into the green, I mean the blue a bit. There, look at that. Some of this, get it nice and light. There we go. See that black I put on there? That's going to continue with this green on top of it. Now, I'm going for depth in the middle. So what I want to explain to you, what's going through my mind, how I want to paint it. I don't want to paint all this, this green color. I want some real dark pockets of dark within there. So I'm just, there's my horizon line there. So I'm probably going to get some bits, where is it, from there coming up, but leaving some darks. This is, doesn't have to be well shaped. What we put in front of this is going to start shaping the greens. So that's pretty much dark there. Coming up to what that stuff is you put at the top. I'm scratching as well, so the edges are kind of they're not solid like that. They've got pizzazz, they've got charisma on the end of them. They've got charismaized tails. This is real dark, but it's going to stand out on there. I want a lot of dark at the bottom here, just some of this feathering over the dark. I'm getting a lot of glare in my camera the way this is, so I hope it's not going to be like that all the way through. Once I've done this colour, it's just a matter of um, blocking in some trunks in the very distant and they'll be sunken back with a lot of other highlighted and darker colours as well. So in all this stamping that I'm doing, see what I'm doing, I'm putting it on and moving it and putting it on and moving it, there's still pockets of black within there, that's creating dark values that we want. Get a lot of this over there. And the good thing about this when you do trees like this in acrylic, you can dry every coat. So as the next layer is going to sit on top the way it should and you're not going to have mudding up problems. Now the canvas is dry. I've got my burn umber. I want to get a bit and greyify it. Okay. Just for some dark, where's that black that was over there? A bit of it here, try and get it a bit darker. Just dark with some hints of grey in it. And I want to just put some distant trunks in there to be sunken back, okay? So we can come nice and flat. Now that's not grey enough. I don't want this one coming right off the painting there. That's not grey enough. There we go, there we go. It's probably a bit too grey, but I can tone it down. Some of them are coming right off the painting there. There we go, just in the background there. Just see the dark pocket there? It's coming. Get it a little bit wetter so it's gonna keep going all the way. Where else can we have some? Probably have some from there. Coming right off the painting there. Just about that fat. Don't have to be any fatter than that. Get some up here. It's up to you how many of these you want to put in the background. Uh, probably some about here somewhere. Now I'm thinking, get a bit more water on your brush again. I might put something here a little bit fatter, come a bit fatter, so make that one a bit fatter in. Yeah. 
stuff in front of it. This is just all background stuff. All background. Okay, that's all background stuff. We've got our dark green on there. Obviously, we've got that dark, but we've got our dark green, and we're just going to add light and medium and darks. So I've got some cadmium yellow, and, and I've got some of this sap green here. I just want to get a value of that first, so as I can get my appropriate colour of that bank lawn in there, and then I can put everything over it. Now this is an easy bit. You know where I said the horizon? We want our water and our bank. So see these black bits that I wanted to leave there? They're at the bottom of the bank, okay? So we're pretty much going to keep this level, but it can be, see how it's coming up and down, up and down like that? You can do that, but try not to bring it on a line like this or a big, you don't want a big box lake, box water. I've done that in my past and I still see a lot of people doing it today. Now we're just going to brush this straight across. We don't want this too high though because we're looking at this and the further away you are something's like that. The closer you are to it it starts you start looking at the top of it okay and you don't want to paint something far away like you're looking at the top of it because that means you're in a helicopter and not everyone can afford a helicopter to go and look at the bush sceneries and lakes and stuff to take photos. So unless you got a helicopter don't paint like you're in one now this is this will be detailed as well because when I've finished I want to I don't know if I'll use this brush or another one I want to try and get some like hairy bits up there and if there's too much green at the top where it's meeting the bush you can always darken it down set it back down but this is just, we need this here to sit the bush behind it, over it, if you, if you follow my gist. Now with this middle tone, I've got some of the white and this sap green. And I want to get that value there. And then highlights will be over this. So there we go there. We want to kind of sink stuff back. So see these trunks and that? There's background stuff and there's, there's this stuff. Get it really bright. And you can come in front of some of those trunks there as well. Okay. Now, I don't want this blobby. I'll just see what happens when I wipe the brush like that. Get some in front, sink the trunks back and get a lot of the edges worn down like so come down now these trunks that i put on there they i don't want to come all the i want to come across the front of them as well leaving blacks there sink them down where it's there let me paint sink it right down leaving some blacks and come in front of it now I'm wearing the paint off my brush because I want it to, there we go, fade like that. But I don't want big blobs of this stuff either. This has got to kind of have its own charisma going also. So bits in there, bits up in there. Down the bottoms, sink them back in there as well. Just like that. Stuff in front of him and then coming right in front of him now I'm using a hog bristle filbert I don't know if it's gonna be doing me justice or not but I'll find out and I just want to laden in this color green where I feel I'm gonna be needing it okay sinking some of that back oh, I'm not quite happy with the glare I'm getting over me canvas there for some reason today. I don't know why that's happening. Right there, right there. Now, grabbing the same colour, I've put the bit of yellow in there, cadmium yellow, you can see. Now I'm going over all that 
whitey muted green just to sink it back come up there pretty much like the underpainting for this section because we're going to add some details on top of all this dark and these colors here later and you'll see just how great it's going to look or hope it's going to be great anyway so I'm putting it on and tearing the edges Once we start detailing, that's when you're going to start telling yourself, I enjoy painting. Look what's happening on my canvas. Okay, we've got our forest green again. And we're going to put some cad yellow into that. Not too much. Because I still want this to be dark. We've got to sit everything back now. I hope that's different to that, yes. And see the dark areas we want to come from there. Where can I start where I could see? And we want to bring this. This can be a bit more detailed now. Which pole am I in this one here? I think that's a bit on the bright side so I've got to pull some more of the um, forest green into it because I don't want it getting too cartoony. The, the dark that's on there I'm trying to see like here come off that and just sink stuff back. There we go, we've got a lot of darks in there coming forward over this. And where our ground is we want to start getting bits creating depth where our, where the forest is meeting the ground so there's just bits of trees here bits of trees here coming down once we highlight this it'll make sense as well that's getting there getting there okay now see here we're kind of Coming from there, we're going to sink those trunks back. Because we're going to gradually highlight stuff as well. What a nice protruding one coming out into these darker colours there, just like that. And he'll be highlighted appropriately, and you'll see what's happening to him later on in the next pass of the highlighted colour. See here I just want to kind of porcelate some of this over there into the darks, leave those darks there because we're still going to put more trunks everywhere and some really brighter colours as well. I'll get some of this just blended into the darks because this colour that I'm putting on now marries from the dark to that color where that lighter color that i use is just boom stop like he didn't have enough grunt to push the car he just stopped he ran out of grunt and that can come over there so we're sort of sitting all that and it's added underpainting layers to our greens i feel i've never done it like this before and it's great to do now I've grabbed the sap green and the cad yellow and I've mixed it up to get my desired yellow green colour. And looking at the mix, see here we've got dark, then it's light. I want to kind of put something in front of all that setting it back. Um, I'll do something just about here, but so I want to nice and light put a shrub here. Nice and light. Don't do big 
thick blobs if you can help it. And I want to kind of bring this shrub forward. And then I'm going to put some more trunks in front of it to bring everything home. Just sort of skewing up it's that shape. And you want some, this one like this in front of it all, and then another one skewing out. And this is going to just make for lovely lights and darks. You can do this, I'm telling you, you can absolutely do it. Let's get that over that dark a little bit. Scramble those edges up. Okay. And then we can just pocket him down onto the ground. Sit him down, he's got little bits coming as he goes. Big chunk there, big chunk there. I see this behaviour in trees quite a lot, the darks and whites, that's why I'm painting it the way I am. How's that looking? There, you've got sort of a wider tree there. You could probably have minuscule little bits up in here, not too much though. It's very little. That's it, that bit there's a bit too big. Look at this value over that branch, where we sunk the branch back. See here, this is all gonna feather out in front of there. Because I'm gonna have to go where I feel there's too many darks there. I'm really gonna have to um, put the darks back. So that's fine, that happens. When you learn to walk, you're not running, you're walking. And that's what we do with painting. We're learning to paint. Just coming over this side, I want to put a tree coming in front of all this. Sitting all those darker ones back. And see down the bottoms like, you get some of this just dribbling over the front there. See, there's a little little one just there. See what you can do? Some of this going all the way up there. Now I will get a, a finer detail brush and some of these leaves, I will put real sharp in focus little leaflets on them. That's what you can call them. Now I want some of this just coming down, creating depth there. See here, look at this. We'll get something from the dark and over there, some other shrub just coming through there. Not everywhere, not everywhere. We're going to put some big trunks in front of this yet. Grabbing a real brighter colour of the yellow green, real a lot brighter. And some of these bits, let's just say here, I just want to really get some detailed leaves within the, the shrub coming out. I'll just do a bit on camera but I'll do the rest off but govern the size you're putting on there. Don't go too big and blobby. See if you can even get some just in front of here and come into that there that colour so as it's like it's coming out from there. And then when you add little dark branches from this, it's just making all those twiggy, leafy subjects within your painting. So I'm gonna have a look at that. Yeah, it's just adding more focus and sharpness, because this ain't too far away. You know, but I'm just giving you an idea. Into there, nice leaves. Trying 
keep them within size of each other. Don't go like that one there's a bit big. And he's going to bleed back into that lighter colour. That's where it's coming from. So see here, there's the colour. I'm going to come from there and just start putting detailing leaves on there like that and bring it back into that colour. Takes a lot of time but a good painting takes a while to do anyway. I've just been changing the value of this, not too bright, not too dark and see here I'm trying to get pockets of this to make it dimensional, get those trunks sunken back with some detailed leaves in front of it, just like that. You can see what I've been doing down there. Well, we can keep going with that until the cows come home, but we've got to stop and put the foreground. And I'll, before we put the foreground, I want to put the reflections in the water. Uh, how do you do that? I'm going to show you. It's bloody easy. You can do it. So grabbing some of the dark, which is the forest green. And it's got a little bit of the yellow mixed into it there. So I want to make it a bit brighter in the water. So I'm going to use that color there. Forest green with a little bit of yellow. Find your darker areas and we'll just sort of pull down. Where are we? We'll pull down a bit. See the dark there? You want to keep that in there. Pull some down in nice straight lines just like that. Big blobs here and there. Big thick blobs of, um, there's some there or there. Boom, boom, boom. It's sort of dark, but don't worry because we will be adding those subtle highlights in it. Now it's important just straight down, straight down. Now there's no, like I said earlier in the, um, I was going to say earlier in the bulletin, earlier in the video, I said there's no sky reflections in this water because from where we're standing and the way the trees are blocking it all out. So we can just pretty much get a lot of colors here like that and you can see how it's sort of starting to look like water but once we really add I'm going to come from there as well once we add the darker and highlights the values in it that's what is going to bring it home pretty much get this here so this is the dark one, but because it's the water reflections, I'm just making it a bit brighter so you can see the darn stuff. And before we highlight these reflections, all you do is you make sure all the blacks are there. Now we want to make the water where it's hitting here, we want to get that done as well. So I'm just going to do that now. I want to get a bit of dead grassy stuff there and darkness just to indicate the separation of the water and the land. So I've got a bit of yellow ochre here and we'll probably put a little bit of white into there. And we're going to just slightly scrunch this in between the where the land's meeting the water and then do it with a bit of a bank, I mean a bit of black. So pretty much come along, get it into your green. We can bring the green back over this but this is just the dirt because grass and foliage and whatnot grows on dirt, okay? The water half, if anything, is a little bit on the blurry side. I don't want it too wet because wetness allows the scrumbling to not happen too well for me. There we go. So we've pretty much done that. Now I've just grabbed some black on my liner brush and get those brushes out of the way. Um, where this is meeting the grass, I want to kind of get some values of darkness there just so when I put the grass back over this, so see, see what I'm doing? I'm just doing lacing along. I'm just like I'm laying spaghetti on the table there like that. 
come into the green a bit don't be just on the creamy color and also you can go like that and this will allow for the depth to make it look like our grass has really grown over it there we go now I'm just going to gently put that green back over that black bit so just finding that color we use for the lawn come from the lawn and dribble over that black sink it down just like that where'd my color go there it is bring it back into the lawn just sink it down from it there we go now we'll finish putting the rest of the reflections in the water don't want too many big bits of that just subtle there so we put our green there we can barely see it but we're going to grab the other green now the uh, sap green with a little bit of yellow just to turn the lights on because we want the reflection in the water just a bit brighter so you can see it and see here we got some green happening there so there we'll just sort of here it's all just just lightly kiss that dark green here and there if you see a deliberate like here's a deliberate bright bit we can probably indicate that here now this is a bit where'd my color go here it is this is a bit darker than what I want it but I'm going to really put the little highlights on there later just to make you go oh yeah a little bit there a little bit up there break some up don't have them all in just lines along get arty and charisma charismatic with your work bit there like that broken it up and you can see what's happening it's quite easy to do that see what i'm doing with this brush i'm putting it on the canvas and i'm just pulling it down you can do that okay see i've broken it up and this one here i'm gonna give him a bit darker there just like that. I've barely looked at the top to compare the bottom how it's looking. I don't want this too bright. So same brush, a little bit more yellow and we just want to indicate it now, just here and there. A little bit there. Within that colour we just put some bit bright ones up there in the top up here they're indicating down there there's some here it's just a little bit brighter just scratching it on and pulling it down it's important to try and keep the lines straight and you can see what's happening that'll do because we've got to put the big trees in now to make this thing pop now I've got some burn umber that'll be the base of the tree so we could probably get one from the ground coming about here and let's say there okay so let's put that one in I'll get my hands steady these are going to be a gray brown so we just want to pretty much get him in right in front of that stuff and get it to the size you want now I want this reasonably fat because it's coming forward now these trees we're putting in you might be thinking you know what Ian I like the painting how it is I'm not going to do that that's fine but you watch when these are in they're just going to add so much bullshit you're going to be like well all right you got me Ian you got me you don't want them right on the back in there shadow there you want them forward a bit so we'll put this one about here see boom that's where his trunk is and he's just going to go straight up there so get him in there I don't know what sort of tree it is but I do know one thing for sure it's a timber tree I'll straighten this up but that's one tree there okay now I'm going to get some of this gray that I got there it's still a bit wet 
and these are the colors I'm going for in that tree so we'll kind of get that edge and pull it around scratch him in pull it around whatever's going to work for you okay and it's I didn't want to dry because I want those darks and that gray to kind of merge together and I don't want a palm tree trunk I want a, a timber tree trunk the bank tree there we go it's probably a little bit bright but we'll deal with that come down all the way down into there scratch him up and get that color in there and I had a bit of an accident there so I had to make a bit of a branch come off get that all in there right against that dark edge you want this to be bright Now I will put more grey in that because that's too, it's too um, browny colour that I not quite was looking for. So I'm going to pick up just the grey on its own because these are water trees, they're stained, they're waterlogged. Let's see how this is going to go. Oh yeah, and it's in all that wet paint. That's pretty much colour I'm going for. Get a bit more on my brush. Let it all play together and that's what trees do, especially these bank trees with many branches. And we'll do this one as well. I've seen trees and timbers and logs in swamps and lakes and rivers and stuff and they've got that grey petrified look about them. That's what I'm going for here now i'm grabbing the darker of that gray and if anything we're pretty much putting i'll use a different brush because i don't want to scare myself and bugger it up so i'm just going to grab a um, another flatter brush and we just want to indicate that in the water here coming from there See how that's going to look. I'm going to look in my monitor in a minute. Right, it's not a real distorted shadow because uh, the water is very still. There's no frogs in it today. Uh, this one's coming about there. It's important to get it on the angle in the reflection. It just gives it that realism about it all. I'll fix this up properly, don't worry. Well, we're going to put a surface on this water as well, which is going to make it look like, oh yeah, you know that, have you ever done something and someone's not quite sure what you're doing, and then when they realise what you're doing, they go, oh yeah, well that's what I'm meaning when I say that. Not finished yet, I'm pricking up some more of that darker burn umber again. Uh, where we go, we'll put one right about here in the water because these are water trees so we'll go about there right up off the painting bang now you've got the map in there where you want it we'll get in the thickness we want it up there like that now as you do is carry on like a five-year-old and color it in bang too easy come on you can do that can't you i know you can i was very intimidated when i learned how to paint um, and just knowing, you know what, I want to do it, it's in my heart to do it, I'm driven to do it, you can do it. If you've got it in your heart that you want to paint, you will paint, because you will put effort into it. Now before, I, I don't want to really dry that because I want to get some of the grey in it now and petrify it. Let's call it the petrified look. So I'm just using a flat brush here. I'll just give it a wipe like a gentleman. And we'll grab the grey colour of that. Jeez, I'm running out of grey, Ian. We need a bit more, maybe. And we're going to just... Oh, we'll start from here first. 
Now see where the tree is hitting the water. You're going to need a bit of um, dark there to indicate where it's touching the surface. Just scratch it on there. I can even about here like make a knot, make another knot about there somewhere so it's darker. Pick up some more and petrify that tree. There we go. I need to look in the monitor just to get a gist of what's happening. Cool. Now see where it's hitting the water? I just noticed that. See how that is on an angle? Get it level, because water sits level. So we'll try and get him a little bit more level there. Just like so. It's important. And I'm just going to get this blurry from there now. Blurry from there, blurry from there. Well, I didn't have to level that because the, um, <laughs> the reflection done it for me. Done. We'll get a bit of dark in there. So I'm just picking up a bit of burn umber mixed with black. I want some, let's put some distinct darker colours here and they can be reflected down as well. Where's that knot that I wanted to put in? I don't want to put some kind of knot in it there and maybe there. And then we can do and we will. Oh, I like that this side here get some black in our trees there like that or not it's not black it's just a bit dark oh that's nice now there's just so many of these I might do I'd like to start in the middle like that and then bring it out of the tree give it a bit of a twist now I don't know what sort of tree it is like I said, it's a petrified tree. Get that a little bit thicker there. That's it. And we'll just get some branches coming off this tree, so to speak. I don't want any too low down because it's one of those trees where, ah, damn it, can't reach the branches. I remember when I was a kid, trees... Can, had such a trunk you can just never reach the branches just here I've got a darker value of that tree color and I'm just kind of drawing a line but also adding distortion so when I put the water surface there It'll make that look like it's sitting on top of clear water, okay? Something else you can do, like see these distant trees here? Very fine. Get some branches going all the way up off here. Highlight some of those blacker ones you put on there just so you can see them, leaving the dark there. And see, where's a leaner on a stick? My knee's bending backwards. You can come from these, get the most finest and put branches to the canopies. Okay, find the canopies. There's one there. Where's another one? Here's one here, for instance. It doesn't suit, but I'll do this just so you get an idea. Get some branches coming to it. This here can be kind of getting just some detail branches stuck in the background, making it busy. What I'm doing is just getting some, you know, like broken sticks where are we it's sort of a darker color just at the base of the tree there 
All right. Uh, just all stick stuff. Just something I can maybe transfer in the water. I've done one here. Let's maybe put something there if we want. And something here coming out of that. High enough, just so as the reflection can be bored into it. Just so you're giving detail in your reflection. It's allowing you to add detail in your reflection. I am just adding a bit of um, foliage stuck on a limb here that's caught some rejuvenating life. You know, some dead branches, a little bit of them's allowing some life to happen. So I've done that here. Bits of big stuff there. And we can also just gingerly pull a lot of that down in the water. Not too bright though, are you? Give it a bit yellowy green. Yeah, that one will do. In the water there. I've just picked up some pure black and where I want to grab some lily pads. So you can do just a few of these if you want or you can do a whole school of them, a whole group of them. I don't know what I'm going to do. I might put a lot of little ones out here near the there and maybe one over your um, reflections uh, guess what I didn't put my water surface on first I've got to do that for me water I just want glaze I've got some glaze medium go to your art shop and buy it it's great and I just want to get a bit of white in there very little though because I just want to put some very dull surface on me water film I want it oh let's get that sunken down there let's get some water hitting that black edge that we put there take some of it off the brush and we want to lightly just put our film on top of the water like this. Get rid of that hard line. You don't want them too big and loud, but enough to sink your reflections in. And you can just have bands of this. It doesn't have to be all over the place. Now let's go there. There we go. Get some of that there. Yeah, look at that. It will dry a little bit, um, sink that tree back, that's it. It will dry a little bit more clearer, see throughy. And just lightly kiss your water with it. Well, that's a bit too much. Just looked in the monitor, that looks crazy. I wonder if I can pull them out a bit. very minimal because they're very powerful once you put them in there. I don't mind, you know, we all learn with knives and white paint, but we can get beyond that and just put a bit more charisma in our water like that. Okay, we've got some of the lighter green. And so leave the black under it. Just get this on the top of it. And I simply just want to go over the top of that, leaving that black underneath it. So we have one here, one there, and one there. Is that making sense? Yeah, they sort of look like lilies. Get that top covered. 
and out here is that going to be safe to lean on we've got a lot of little ones get them straight though we've got a lot of little ones we put out here so they're sitting on the blacks you know how i do me rocks you need the the black there from the stick out so we'll try and get a bit more yellow within some of these bigger ones just so it's not green green now I could have should have dried it before I did the yellow as well but that's looking lily lily in it lily eh lily I want to put like a a stalk on some of them just like that I'm just using the white I'll get one right in the guts of that coming all the way up and then make sense of his reflection we'll get this one up here bang bang I just reckon they look like good little additives for your painting. One there, one there, and one there. So you can see what I've done, can't you? And then we'll get his reflection down there, that one there, and that one there. Yeah, and then one more here. All right, I'll just autograph this and we'll whack a frame on it. Be sure to check out the links in the description below. Share, like and subscribe. And thank you to all my patrons who support my content every month. Much appreciated there to those people. And we'll put Steve's little footprint on there as well like normal. All right, we'll whack a frame on it. There you go, it's not too shabby, is it? We've got reflective trees on a lake with a lot of depth right in there. I'll move the frame a bit so you can see, but see how I've got the sky just peeking through there. That's what I wanted, just a little like that. And I know you can do that. Well, what a great exercise that was. A lot of things to discover and learn. Give it a go. Comment below if you have any questions for me and tell your friends if you like what I'm doing. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you be sure to tell everybody, all right? Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.